You're with the India Today Mood of the Nation biannual survey brought to you in partnership with Sea Voter, which has done this comprehensive nationwide survey at a time when all eyes are on the big question who will win the general elections of 2024? That's the question that we're going to answer in a detailed manner this time. But not just the big picture. We'll be going state by state to bring you all the results you've been waiting for. This is the last Mood of the Nation opinion poll before the general elections of 2024, which is what makes this that much more important. And so much rides on the results of this Mood of the Nation opinion poll. Let's introduce you to our guests who are going to join us over the next several hours as we bring you the results of uh, the Mood of the Nation poll. I want to start by introducing Yashwan Deshmukh, lead cephologist at Sea Water. He's got this fancy Himachali cap on and uh, has been working very hard over the last several weeks. And lots of changes, Rajdeep, in the chess drawing board, forcing revisions in the MOT and samples. So he's really been working doubly hard, uh, not just because of us, but also because of all the changes that and have happened. And there could be more change. changes within the next month. You know, change is the only constant. Next month or tonight, tomorrow, there could Who be knows? changes uh, galore. And therefore, we'll have to keep looking at these numbers very carefully. Flanking him is Raj Chingappa, editorial director at India Today magazine. He and his team have worked on compiling and dissecting the results of uh, this poll. And you can read the analysis in uh, the new issue of the magazine which is out in stands now. We've got Amitabh Tiwari who's joining us, political analyst. And to our left, we've got Rahul Verma. Rashid Kidwai joins us. And we've got Sanjay Kumar from, C, uh, from CSDS. So this is really as sharp a political panel as can be. And I'm discounting myself. And uh, no, I'm keeping guys deep there, discounting myself. But a very sharp panel on this. So what we'll do for a moment is take you through the methodology. Uh, adopted by Sea Water for this poll, and then we'll go state by state in getting you the results of this poll. So, this Mood of the Nation opinion poll was done between the 15th of December and the 28th of January. Largely, some polling happened later when there were specific changes like there were in Bihar, but largely between the 15th of December and the 28th of January. For this poll, the sample size was 35,801. Uh, but Sea Water, as our viewers know by now, has a continuing tracker sample. So that adds 1,13,000 uh, interviews to the Mood of the Nation sample, giving us a robust sample size of 1,49,000. For this sample and the tracker that's been going on uh, between the 15th of August and the 31st of January. So there's a 3% uh, plus minus uh, margin of error at the micro level and Yashwan claims he has a 95% uh, confidence level. So that uh, said, Rajdeep, let's now dive straight into the numbers for Uttar Pradesh. Okay, let's go state by state and we are starting with the state of Uttar Pradesh because remember, generally it's believed all roads to Delhi lead through Lucknow. That certainly to some extent has been the case in 2014 and 19 given the domination that the BJP has had in the Hindi heartland. But let's take a look at what the mood of the nation poll is saying. First, let's take a look at vote share because vote share will give you a sense of where the parties stand and what we are predicting at the moment is a 52% vote share for the NDA which means that the NDA is actually up from last time. They're even higher than they were in 2019 when they did remarkably well in that election. The India Alliance and presumably this India Alliance includes the Congress, the SP and the RLD as of now. The RLD could well switch sides. Therefore, at the moment, they are at 36%, up 10% last time, but they have lost the BSP, which was in 2019 with the Samajwadi Party and others 12%, primarily the Bahujan Samaj Party. But the key thing is, how does this translate into seats? That's the difficult task that Yashwant has undertaken. The seats, what would the seats be in the 80-member UP Assembly? And just take a look at that. The NDA goes up from 64 to 72 out of 80. It's a gain of eight. So NDA, BJP holding rock solid in the saffron heartland in a way. The uh, India line six to eight, so only a marginal increase and that's divided between one for the Congress and seven for the Samajwadi party. Others are completely wiped out. The 10 last time were the BSP. So Rahul, the first big numbers clearly show the BJP holding its own in what's become its basket. And if the BJP is already at 72 in the way uh, the state plays right now. Yashwan, the most important question is, now that RLD is very clearly in talks with the BJP, if 
uh, Jayan Chaudhary was to join the NDA, where could that 72 reach? Well, I mean, of course, uh, it will impact uh, uh, minimum number of two seats for sure. Uh, but it's not just about how many seats that RLD is contesting and they are likely to win. It's also about the overall impact of the JAT voter consolidation in the entire Western UP and not just Western UP, but across in other states, which, are, which have a significant number of JAT voters. So that, having said that, Rahul, let me be upfront about this one. And me and Raj discussed this so many times about the numbers of the seats and everything. You know I am a conservative poster. And I find it very difficult to tell people that, you know, why are these others or other NDA numbers or non-NDA numbers coming up even when we have NDA or BJP crossing 50% of vote? That is simply because of the probability. When you say any party is there in that particular region, even if you cross 0 to 1, 0 to 1, in UP with six regions, you end up with 0 to 6 kind of range. So it's also a question of probability. Otherwise, this number with this kind of a vote share could end up anywhere. So you're saying it could be 80 also? I will not say it cannot happen. No, because, because he's because sitting on 72 and he says, I'm conservative. No, no, <laughs> it, 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 it is a possibility. You know, it can't be ruled out. But let's, you know, we are T20 style today. So I'm going to ask all our panelists quick responses because we are going through the entire country. Raj Chengappa, Uttar Pradesh, as I said, the road to Delhi reads through Lucknow. If this is the result of, uh, of Lucknow, clearly the keys to Delhi are in the hands of Prime Minister Modi. No doubt Uttar Pradesh is the bellwether state. And if it is showing the kind of results that it, uh, the uh, India Today Sea Water Poll is showing, the BJP is on its way. I would only like to point out a little bit of history because uh, the, uh, Prime Minister Modi had said he'd want to win uh, 405 seats and for the BJP, 370 seats. So if you look back, the only person who did that was Rajiv Gandhi, who won 405 and, of course, subsequently became 14 when Assam and Punjab were added on. And at that time in UP, uh, that was the undivided UP, I think the Congress won 82 out of 85 seats. That was a sweep. Now, if we are going by these figures, as if touch 50%, I'm sure the other pollsters would so say that, the BJP would require to max in Uttar Pradesh, if it has to get its target of 370, that it Remember, those two elections are very different, Amitabh Tiwari, because the 84 election was held in the aftermath of the assassination of then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. It was an election uh, won largely on the back of sympathy. Here is Prime Minister Modi, who's been in power for 10 times. This is not an empathy, sympathy vote. This is a performance vote. If you end up 72, or if Yashwan says could be even higher, that would be the most incredible performance imaginable. Yeah, so if, if these numbers hold true, if you see whatever is BSP's loss of 10 seats is largely accruing into the tally of the BJP. BJP is gaining 10 seats at the expense of BSP. So if these numbers hold true, then what is clearly being shown is that it is largely a pro-incumbency vote. It is a pro-Modi vote. It's a pro-development vote. It's a pro-vote for his policies and the way he has handled the but, economy. But are you surprised because Rahul Verma, Uttar Pradesh was for a long time, for about 30 years, completely fragmented. Now suddenly, since 2014, the BJP has come to dominate the state. Two general elections, two assembly elections, and now you could have a third general election. Is the BJP therefore entering into UP, much like it was in Gujarat, a completely dominant party, 50% more, 50% uh, vote and more, should suggest a uh, dominant state? Absolutely, uh, Prasdeep. One reason for fragmentation in the 90s and early 2000s was that there were at least four credible players that were present. Uh, BJP, Congress, uh, SP and BSP, the regional parties were very, very strong. Over a period of time, Congress declined and also BSP declined. So why Yashwant is saying that uh, he's, the numbers are conservative? Because this time BSP is moving out uh, and they are still holding on to 10% or uh, some vote share that, there. Which means that actually the numbers could be much more than 75, even touching 70. No, but 70. here's the thing. It reflects the continuing trend of elections becoming bipolar. Remember, the BSP, according to Yashwan's analysis, is projected to come down from 19% vote share last time to 8% this time. That's 11% down. And this is a party which in 2007 had won 200 plus seats. So that just shows how the BSP has ceded ground to now become a rump. 8% Sanjay Kumar for the once mighty BSP just shows that 
for time to come, elections in UP will be BJP on the one side and Samajwadi Party on the other, with a much weaker Samajwadi Party against a much stronger BJP. Uh, Rahul, we need to understand why elections are becoming bipolar not only in UP but in Bihar and many other states. Because I get a sense that the entire election now is being contested in the name of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. I don't see this election as a contest between Rahul Gandhi and Narendra Modi or Narendra Modi versus any other leader. It is a referendum on how, how do you rate the performance of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So people are divided on two axes, pro-Modi, anti-Modi. And you see the election becoming bipolar on this, not on the issues, but largely on this factor. If you are on pro-Modi side, you tend to align, your party tend to align with NDA. And if you are anti-Modi, you tend to align with the UPA. Or if you are not able to align with the UPA, then you go alone. But that is what is happening in UP. But where does this lead, therefore, the India Alliance, Rashid Kidwai? Because you've got a situation where you are tying up with the Congress and Samajwadi Party tying up. Uh, we still don't know how the seat distribution will take place. But when they look at these numbers, there will be a sense of hopelessness almost, particularly if Jayan Chaudhary also uh, leaves uh, the alliance. Even if Mayavati you know, was to come on their side, which seems unlikely in a few weeks' time, either way, India Alliance is starting this race with uh, one hand tied behind its back. Yes, I agree. There is a total sense of despondency. But I still think... Uh, Mayawati is the biggest insurance policy that BGP has in Uttar Pradesh. Imagine this 8-10% vote going to, you know, India Alliance would have made material difference. And second thing is, how many, you know, Gandhis, uh, three Gandhis, Rahul, Sonia and Priyanka, how many of them are going to be in fray? Because if, unless they contest, and same applies to Samajwadi Party, Akhilesh Yadav and uh, Dempel Yadav and all those people, credible people. So what's your sense? Will any of the Gandhis contest now? Given I, don't these think, I, think, I think they are looking for Rajya Sabha route. At least one of them will get into No, but Rajya I don't Sabha. agree with Rashid Kidwai. He says BSP joining the India Alliance makes a difference. Even if I add 36 and 8, that's 44. Up against 51 for, uh, 52 for the NDA, it still leaves them six short. No, no, but what so even if like there is no perfect no, 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 even if there is perfect transfer of votes, which we saw in the last elections, when they were both stronger and the BJP not as strong, it still didn't make a difference. Look, Rahul, BJP is the dominant party of UP, there's no doubt about that. And all the other parties are basically trying to compete for that same anti-BJP vote that exists. So even if they come together, they are actually only consolidating the anti-BJP vote. The BJP vote itself, once it's crossing 50%, even if it was 48% tomorrow, they would still be over, well over 60 as they were in 2019. So I think... And Rahul, we are not factoring in the Ram Lahar, which is there. There is a lot of... Why people are shifting? Because they think that there is going to be a huge, you know, consolidation in favour of uh, uh, BJP in Uttar Pradesh. And now, that explains... So this anything. was a cricket match and the BJP ends up 72 out of 80 in the first day and the projection across our table of really sharp political minds is that it could actually even be more. Then, you know, the Congress and the India Alliance are out of the race even before the race has begun. Shahzad can say, okay, thank you very much. I don't need to do the talking. Modi is doing the talking for me. Rahul, no, no game is over till, it's, till it is uh, totally over. Right? So I know this is a very disappointing save for uh, the India Alliance. But... I must say that despite every all the advantages that the Prime Minister and Amit Shah and BJP have built up over these 10 years or so, you know, they, they're still pretty much at 50%. The opposition has not been able to come together as we need to, to defeat uh, 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 this, uh, this power so far. But the election is not over. The election is going to be contested in UP and all over the place. And by the way, I know you people said something about the performance. This is a performance uh, election. If this is a performance election, I want to ask you. I want to ask the people of UP, for example, that until 2014, UP's economy was larger than Tamil Nadu's economy. Now, 10 years later, and most of that is under... Well, all of it is under Prime Minister uh, Modi, and most of it is under uh, Chief Minister uh, uh, Yogi Adityanath. Why is the UP economy now smaller than the Tamil Nadu economy? What has changed? Now, at the national level, Salman, if, Salman, if, Salman, if it is Salman, Salman, one, one, point, are, one point, one point, we are doing a one point. T20 style analysis, so we want one point at a time. You one make more, your one point. One no, no, let, one. let Shahzad, let Shahzad Punawala now respond. Shahzad, the fact is that UP is seen now as a dominant party state. Do you give credit to the Modi factor, the Upyogi factor, a combination of both, the fact that the double engine there seems to be really working at the moment? 
राजदीप आई गिव क्रेडिट टू थ्री फैक्टर्स एंड लेट मी कंप्लीट माई आंसर वन इज राम लला टू इज गीता एंड थ्री इज पी डी एंड लेट मी कंप्लीट राम लला मीन्स राष्ट्रीय सुरक्षा महिला लाभार्थी लीडरशिप एंड अर्थव्यवस्था गीता मीन्स ग्रोथ इन्फॉर्मेशन इनोवेशन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर टेक्नोलॉजी एंड आत्मनिर्भर भारत एंड पी डी ए मीन्स परफॉर्मेंस डिलीवरी एंड एस्पिरेशन टूडे राजदीप मोदी जी एंड योगी जी हैव कन्वर्टेड द वोकेबुलरी ऑफ पीपल लाइक यू फ्रॉम एंटी इनकम्बेंसी टू प्रो इनकम्बेंसी वेर इवन द मोस्ट क्रिटिकल सिनिक्स लाइक योगेंद्र यादव एंड राजदीप सरदेसा इन द डेमोक्रेटिक न्यूज रूम ऑल्सो हैव टू से दैट बीजेपी को सबसे ज्यादा नंबर मिलेंगे ही दिस काइंड ऑफ कन्वर्जन हैपन्स वेन टाइम एंड द टाइम द पीपल सी द लीडरशिप एंड द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द पार्टी ऑन द ग्राउंड एंड ओवरऑल बिकॉज वी हैव अ मिशन एंड अ विशन वी आर नॉट पीपल ऑफ कमीशन करप्शन एम्बिशन एंड फैमिली प्रोफेशन एंड दे फॉर आई गिव क्रेडिट टू राम लला गीता एंड पी डी ए You know, so, I, I love his acronyms. He's going to go very far in politics, given those acronyms. Mr. Modi has clearly uh, got a few bucks in the party who know how to do uh, how to use acronyms rather well. What I want to do now is play out a small excerpt from a show we had earlier today uh, from Lucknow, where we spoke to voices on the ground trying to get a sense of the pulse in Uttar Pradesh. So here are some excerpts from the Murdi Nation poll from Uttar Pradesh from earlier today. Joining you from the city of Lucknow, when once again, if political cliches could hold true, nothing. विपक्ष की जल गई है एकता की रस्सी, इसलिए भाजपा यूपी में जीतेगी अस्सी में अस्सी. मुझे लगता है यहाँ पर बैठ के लक्ष्यदार बातें करना और थोड़ी बहुत शेरों शायरी करने ना एक चीज़ है. आप धरातल पर आके असलियत देख लीजिए हम पूरे विश्वास के साथ कह रहे हैं कि कांग्रेस पार्टी का उत्तर प्रदेश में खाता नहीं खुलने देंगे युवा चाहता है रोजगार और रोजगार के नाम पर आप कहते हैं पकौड़े तल लो केवल भारतीय जनता पार्टी है जो बढ़ती हुई दिखाई दे रही है बाकी सारे राजनीतिक दल आपको तो गिरते हुए दिखाई दे रहे हैं आप सबके अकाउंट में पंद्रह लाख आ गए दो करोड़ रूपए रोजगार मिल गया नहीं मिला और जब अलायंस करना था ना तब राहुल जी के प्रोजेक्शन के लिए उनकी एक यात्रा प्लान कर दी गई और जहाँ जहाँ चरण पड़े राहुल के ताता बनता धार हुआ जैसे जैसे यात्रा प्रारंभ हुई एक एक करके अलायंस लगातार छूटते जा रहे हैं शुडेंट दी इंडिया अलायंस एक्चुअली लुक एट ब्रिंगिंग इन मायावती बिकॉज एक परसेंट वोट शेयर ऑल्सो जी माइट नॉट विन सिंगल सीट एज फार एज बहन मायावती इज कंसर्न आई थिंक इट्स रियली अप टू हॉट शी वुड वॉन्ट टू तीन सौ सत्तर हम कह रहे हैं क्यूँकी तीन सौ सत्तर हमने हटाई है I want to come now to the state of Punjab and just keep in mind that the numbers that you're about to see assume that the Aam Aadmi Party and the Congress will find a way of fighting together but this is a state where AAP and Congress are one and two and whenever two parties are one and two they typically find it very difficult to be able to distribute seats amongst themselves between two and three it's much easier than it is between parties that are one and two but since that's the way it is seeming on the surface that's the calculation that we're about to show you so here are the numbers for Punjab i'm going to start by taking a look at the vote share numbers first the bjp had 10% vote share in the previous lok sabha elections that's now projected to go up to 17 uh that's 7% up uh the aam aadmi party had 7% vote share in the last lok sabha elections that's now projected to go up to 27 that's 20% up from the last time the congress had 40% vote share in the last elections that's now projected to come down to 38 that's 2% down from the last time the akalis had 28% vote share that's now projected to come down to 14 a loss of 14% for the once formidable akalis let's take a look at how this converts into seats so on your screen right now for the 13 seats of punjab here are the c voter india today mood the nation projections c voters projecting that the bjp is likely to stay at two seats that two uh, they likely to stay at two what's gone out from the nda kitty there are the akali seats the aap uh, is expected to be at five seats that's up four from the last time if we see the party wise break up of these seats uh, the akalis were at two that's likely to come down to one so the bjp holds on to its two seats uh the aap goes up from one to five remember in the first election they fought in 2014 they had four seats uh, so they go up to five this time the congress at five there were eight last time so they're down three and the akalis are at one 
down to. Now, what could change potentially, Ashwant, is if at the last moment the Akhalis and the BJP are able to tie, because behind the scenes is a lot happening. It's not firm, finalized, both sides haven't decided. The Akhalis we know are keen, the BJP is 50-50, wishy-washy, but that can change any time. And if that changes, how does that potentially change these numbers? Of course, I mean, that, that would be having some impact for sure, because uh, I guess that uh, between the Akhalis and the BJP, even though there has been a quite a lot of bad in the recent years, uh, the, as far as the core voting is concerned, they are pretty much supplementary in nature. The core has been anti-Congress vote at large, which the Akalis and the BJPs have been tending together. So this separation might have split it vertically because BJP ran away with the Hindu votes and Akalis were with their Panthic votes. But if they come together, definitely that will have an impact. But uh, 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 what, it will not be the same kind of seat sharing. Uh, Rajdeep, that is for sure, because wherever BJP is going back with their old allies, the seat sharing equation is no more the same, which sure. was defined by Vajpayee and Advani. But you know, yeah. this is a fascinating state, Raj Chengappa, because the alliances have, stay, have changed dramatically in the last few years. The BJP and the Akalis were together. AAP versus Congress was the battle uh, of Punjab. They've now come together. They may not have chemistry on the ground. Would you really believe that this AAP-Congress alliance will work in the end? and actually see the arithmetic benefits that this poll is suggesting? Or do you believe in the end uh, it will be very difficult for AAP and Congress to actually fight Punjab together? Which may be another twist to these numbers. It's my favorite state since I was uh, there as editor-in-chief of the Tribune. But I think here, let's take Sanjay's argument of brand Modi and a referendum of that. How much of that is going to play out in Punjab? It never happened when Rajiv Gandhi, in, 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 uh, you know, it was a very troubled state, of course, you know, at that particular time. So uh, the Congress never benefited at that time because of the way that happened. So if you look at uh, it currently, if the AAP and the Congress get together, they're a decisive force. Have they got together? Have they agreed on anything? That is not to be seen as yet. No, but, but can I counter what you're saying to say? That it's almost impossible. How will you decide? If you're one and two in that state, on a drawing board, you can say whatever you want. Given the problems in Uttar Pradesh, given the problems in Bihar, it is very difficult. In Delhi, they may still have some kind of an arrangement. In Punjab, they'll ultimately come to the conclusion that it's better for us to fight separately. No, they may well do that, Raul. They actually seem to believe that that might even work to their favor. That, you know, you have a multiple, uh, multi corner No, so place. I'm saying then the premise of the poll for Punjab is flawed because it, it hypothetically assumes uh, that but, they're fighting together. Yeah, sure. But the one thing about Punjab, to take from what Raj Chengappa said, and that's the fascinating part of Punjab, uh, Sanjay Kumar, it's the one state the one state in North India where the Modi wave has not worked both in 2014 and 19. Look at both these elections. The Congress, if there's one state in Northern India, held its own in the last 10 years, it's Punjab. Is there, you seeing the politics of Punjab, therefore, is very distinct and different from the rest of the country in a way. Uh, two factors. Even though the, the political clout of Shiromani Akali Dal has com come down, but look at the states where regional parties are strong, BJP has not found it easy to make inroads. That's one case why in Punjab BJP has not been able to make inroads. Second, BJP has been contesting in Punjab in alliance with Akalis. So Akalis have been a dominant player. That was a difficulty in the Bihar also for the first couple of decades. Also, look at the social composition of Punjab. In Punjab, we have a very large majority of Sikh voters. So if you look at Ahmadbi, BJP's popularity, Narendra Modi's popularity, there is some difference if you look at among the Hindus and people belonging to different other religion. That is another factor why BJP has not been able to penetrate in Punjab the way they have been able to expand in other parts no, of the No, but the area. calculation in the BJP and Shahzad can build on this. I'll also show you the uh, projection for Chandigarh, which is expected to go to the BJP. It's an urban pocket, and we saw the mess in the mayoral elections recently, but the poll is predicting that Chandigarh goes to the BJP. The problem is... Both the Home Minister and the Prime Minister have, have often say that they're very emotionally invested in the Punjab story. And yet, on the ground, we see, especially amongst the Sikhs, this pushback. So how does this square? The fact that the Prime Minister himself feels so emotionally close to the Punjabi community, to the Sikh religion, and yet there is a lot of antipathy and a very strong pushback. 
राहुल लुक व्हाट संजय जी वाज सेइंग जस्ट नाउ दैट सिंस वी वर द यंगर ब्रदर इन द अलायंस एंड दैट अलायंस वाज नॉट प्योरली फॉर पॉलिटिकल रीजंस इट वाज आल्सो फॉर इंश्योरिंग द मैसेज ऑफ सबका साथ एंड सामाजिक सौहार्द बिटवीन द हिंदू सिख कम्युनिटी एंड देयरफॉर वी सैक्रिफाइस्ड लॉट ऑफ आवर स्पेस एंड लॉट ऑफ द अदर थिंग्स आल्सो व्हाइल वी वर इन दैट अलायंस फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम नाउ वी आर फाइंडिंग आवर फीट इन पंजाब नॉट जस्ट इन अर्बन एरियाज बट आल्सो इन द रूरल पॉकेट्स एंड देयरफॉर दिस वोट इज अ वोट ऑफ एक्सपेंशन इट इज अ वोट ऑफ credibility that will keep increasing over the few period of years and look at the outreach that prime minister modi has done towards the sikh community it is not a political outreach it is an emotional outreach whether it is celebrating the prakash parbs of the great gurus of the sikh community whether it is celebrating veer balas divas or whether it is reaching out to various sections whether it is the fcra clearance on harminder sahib langars that we are uh, making gst free so i think there is a concerted effort not everything is done only for political purpose some things are beyond politics for rashtraniti we have done lot of things and i think that is also being reflected because punjabis are very patriotic people they will they are ready to sacrifice their lives for the nation they have contributed so much to the armed forces and i think you will develop you'll see because the kind of mismanagement aam aadmi party is doing look at the nasha mafia look at the kind of corruption that is taking place i'm not saying this mr siddu is saying about the corruption and okay. also the alliance Now, the thing congress and aap, in punjab amitabh tiwari is if they fight unbooted. separately this calculation and you're seeing the india numbers projected by a sea voter to zoom up in terms of vote share very substantially all that is based on the assumption that they fight together uh, if they don't fight together and if this is the base where akalis are at 27% vote share up 20 from the last time congress is at 38% vote share up and 27 from the last time up at 27 up 20 congress at 38 down 2 akalis at 14 down 14 how could punjab read in the absence of this alliance see Punjab is the hotbed of anti-center politics. So even if AAP and Congress do not form an alliance, and unless the sub the Akali Dal forms an alliance with the BJP, these numbers could still hold. So unless the Akali Dal ties up with the BJP, I don't see a substantial difference in the numbers because the politics itself there is anti-center. Hindu being the majority in the rest of the country. but being a minority there complicates the political dynamics there and you know it's interesting to look at this because if we turn to the next state uh, because i think these two states the reflect just how india's yes. map is so complex just turn to delhi not too far away from punjab where again the congress and the aap are trying uh, uh, trying to tie up just look at how the numbers stack up in delhi seven seats on offer but the national capital is often a barometer of what tends to happen across uh north india take a look at vote share as per this in delhi even with the congress aap alliance you have 57% vote share going to the bjp and 40% to the india alliance of the congress and aap together others three how does this then translate into seats seven seats in punjab uh, in delhi all seven went last time remember to the bjp all seven will go back to the bjp as per this poll so that takes off from what amitabh tiwari just said punjab is almost sui generis uh, uh, rahul verma there if the congress and aap tie up they do very well they tie up in delhi where the aap is in power again and yet it's a clean sweep for the bjp does this reflect urban mindsets and delhi mindsets versus the anti center mindset as uh, amitabh put it about punjab uh, yes a little bit rajdeep uh, uh, that punjab uh, the demographic composition is different it has always had a uneasy relationship with the center even when uh, congress party was in power in 1970s and 80s but you have to also understand that this alliance in both delhi and punjab is not easy because in P punjab aam aadmi party feels that they can gain these seats even without the congress so you've seen uh, chief minister of punjab making statements that we don't need to have an alliance and in delhi even if they come together they will not be able to make any dent no but why not why you know the it, reason is that congress explain party why the aam aadmi party in two consecutive elections has swept delhi but the bjp has swept delhi in lok sabha so because so bjp continues to hold 40% vote share in delhi no matter which election is happening mm -hmm. uh, congress gets 25% when lok sabha happens but when vidhan sabha happens or mcd happens congress comes down below 10% so that entire congress uh, vote which is in lok sabha with them actually shifts with the bjp 
So AAP continues to be around 45 to 50 percent in, in, uh, in assembly elections. But in, in Vidhan Sabha, BJP gains... No, no, no. My view is it's the Modi no, factor. No, no. You know, what, what seems to be is that the Lok Sabha elections, you look at Narendra Modi. When you're fighting a state election, you look at Arvind Kejriwal. That's happened two elections in a row. And it seems as per your numbers, it's going to happen again. It's a split vote, uh, Rajdeep, and it's happening across India, across all the states, honestly speaking. Each and every state... If you look into the vote share of the last assembly and the last Lok Sabha in together, you will see somewhere between 10 to 25 percent of jump in favor of the BJP whenever the Lok Sabha elections are there. However, in case of Punjab, I must mention this because it's an important and critical point to add. In the last 10 years, in our daily tracker, there are only three states where Rahul Gandhi as an individual leader has scored over in popularity over Narendra Modi. Three states all across India. One is Punjab, one is Tamil Nadu, and one is Kerala. But, and they have been like that. But one critical thing is, 10 years back, the gap between Rahul Gandhi and Narendra Modi was so huge in all these three states that it was a one-way traffic of sort. But over the 10 years, this gap is reducing and reducing and reducing, and it used to be in double digits. Right now, it is in single digits. But, but you know, the real, the split vote, I think, Rahul, is going to become more and more important. Voters seeing Lok Sabha very different to Vidhan Sabha, and Salman shows that's your big problem in a way. In Delhi itself, in the heart of the national capital, even if you tie up with AAP, it's the BJP that sweeps the election. That suggests to me that that voter is giving a huge bump to the BJP the moment it's a Lok Sabha election and Mr. Modi is on the ticket. No, I, I look, at, uh, look at it a little differently. The, what, what I'm seeing is if this data is correct, and uh, I have no way of knowing whether this is or this is not, we'll find out during the elections. But the Congress vote share is coming up in Delhi because people see, many people remember the governance that Congress uh, has delivered to this country. And that is why I think you see the uh, war share coming up at the night when it comes to national level politics. Why that doesn't happen at the uh, state level uh, elections? It's I don't a different know what one. you're saying, Salman but, Bhai. From 23, it's gone up to 25. That's up to up no, no, from 18 I, is down to 15. That's down three. I was BJP down, was at 57. No, 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 it's at talking, 57. So you're clutching at straws, really. Rahul, I was, I was talking about the comparison with assembly elections. Somebody said that you know during assembly elections the vote share goes down. And during parliamentary elections, it has come up. So clearly, people do remember that the UP at times are very good. And why should they not? I mean, the per capita income still 32%. Country, percent. No, no, one minute, sir. You're still 32%, 32, 32 right. behind the BJP. Rashid Kidwai, right. this is, you know, this is the problem the Congress is facing. When it comes to a Lok Sabha election, Mr. Modi is on the ticket. It appears that the Congress is not preferred to the BJP. We've seen that. Direct BJP Congress fights. The Congress loses out now, even in an alliance with AAP, they may lose out in Delhi. Yeah, but Rajdeep, Delhi's story is very simple. It is due to Muslim vote that swings. In assembly election, Muslim vote tends to favor Arvind Kejriwal's party, and in Lok Sabha election, it favors the Congress. So that is why there is a kind of mismatch. And when we talk about vote share, we must look at the each and every constituency profile. And that's where it matters. So even if some party is maybe 40% plus, another party is 57%, in seven Lok Sabha seats, the results may be slightly different. So vote share... No, so you make an necessarily... important point. In a seat like, say, Chandni Chonk or in East Delhi, Absolutely. where the minorities are in big numbers, Rashid Kidwai's argument is, and that's where we can go across Sanjay Kumar, that... As far as the state is concerned, it may still be 57 versus 25 and 13. But in that concentrated pocket, it may help this alliance, if it comes together, put a tighter fight in two seats, at least East Delhi and Chandni Chowk. Uh, this is a possibility, Rahul. I don't rule out this possibility. But if we are looking at on one side 57 and on the other side it is, say, in the 40s, 42, 45, 46, this is huge gap makes it impossible that there would be, there are chances of close contest or a reversal in a couple you know, of countries. But the, the, real, the real story is the BJP, which gets about 38 to 40 percent in Vidhan Sabha, goes up to 57 in Lok Sabha. No, 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 that's the story. No, but that's the story. Modi, that's the story for Vidhan Sabha election, my, no, sir, election, my, for a Lok no, no, Sabha election. Sir, the point is the Modi factor, Rahul, is giving the BJP an 18 to 20 percent jump. That's the story. From 37, 38 percent, where it loses to the AMRP party, which gets over 50 percent. So the AMRP party is clearly seen as a Delhi regional party, and the uh, BJP in a Lok Sabha election takes it. Whatever the minority vote may get consolidated, but the majority vote in Delhi 
is going firmly towards the BJP for the Lok Sabha. Six months later, have a Vidhan Sabha election, and the situation at least twice before, that. You don't at know least that. twice before, has uh, been very different. True. This time around, we don't you know, know. So I think that's Rahul, the Rahul, significance. Rahul, I want to make a quick point. Yes. Uh, two things. One, uh, the minority factor will come uh, into play on assembly elections, where the assembly constituencies are smaller, Small. and then you have enough number which can swing vote. Uh, even in Chadni Chowk, you don't have 50% Muslim population which can suddenly turn the seat. And besides, after delimitation in 2008, the entire composition yeah. of these seats have changed. Actually, in Delhi, there is not even a single Lok Sabha seat now which can say that, okay, minority votes are the decisive vote here. Yeah. Earlier, the Chandni Chowk, before till 2009 elections probably, that was the probability, but after 2008, no, but in Delhi, no if up in Congress are on the same ticket, it does make things more exciting. It does. It, it does marginally. certainly. Absolutely. Uh, it it makes it. Still be seven but, but, but having said that, you know, it it's, 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 also, it's keep... also the fact, you know, Rajdeep, uh, Sheena Dixit ji was very clear, very, very clear that if, if Congress has to revive they have to make sure they do not go with our Madhvi party. Without, go, no, without so, you know, uh, that's Ajay how... Ajay Markan is also clear. That, so they, they have, she has been very clear. No, so I, I, I really think, Rahul, the story which we must stress is this Modi factor. Because, I, you know, this kind of split wording... But you're sounding see, surprised about no, it. No, because it's nowhere else of... in the world. You see, in, in, go across the world. A Republican state will vote for the Republicans, both for the Senate usually and for the presidential election. In India, you're seeing it now in two consecutive elections. For Delhi, we want uh, Arvind Kejriwal, but upar hamare liye Narendra Modi. And you're going to see it across because the country. Because America doesn't have a Modi, because that's why. Whether... Uh, you know, whether, uh, whether I, no, no, I, I don't think it's simplified in that. I think the Indian voter has very consciously decided who I want for chief minister and who I want for prime minister. And I think it is fascinating because I don't think, as I said, I, I, I don't know any other country in the world where it happens. No, we make too much out of this and this is my personal opinion. There is only 15 to 20 percent of vote which swings here and there. That's so, a lot. No, yeah, so, but, but, in only couple of, but in only a couple of states, except Odisha, except uh, 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 Delhi, mm. do you see a split verdict of this kind? Yes, see, Karnataka. You see Karnataka in election after election, you vote for the for one party in the Vidhan Sabha, you vote for another party in Lok Sabha. I'm willing to have you, a can small can wager can that there'll be another half a dozen states where this will happen. Can you but bet like now after Congress winning Karnataka in 2023? Congress is going to do same way as it done in 2019. But yesterday, I met a Maharashtra leader yesterday. He said, we have put all our eggs, uh, a Maharashtra Congress leader, we have put all our eggs in Vidhan Sabha. I said, what about Lok Sabha? He said, Lok Sabha Madhe Modi hai. <laughs> Please understand. Yeah, yeah. That's how they are seeing it. That is the reality on the ground. 2019. Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chattisgarh. Okay, let's come to Madhya Pradesh in Rajasthan because this is a fascinating political adda and if we go on, we can be here all evening. So I want to come now to Madhya Pradesh and take you through the numbers and we need to just step on the pedal a bit so we can go, otherwise we'll be here all evening. So in Madhya Pradesh, the end, the BJP had 28 seats. Apart from Chindwara, they won 28 out of 29 seats. This time, they're expected to come down to 27. Uh, the uh, India Alliance had one, expected to go up to two. This is as far as votes are concerned. 58% last time for the BJP, same this time. And the Congress's vote share, 35 last time, expected to be 38 this time. So basically, you're predicting that one other seat could possibly go away from the BJP and one extra seat could get added to the Congress. I want to quickly go across to Rajasthan as well from uh, Madhya Pradesh. We'll take vote share first. Uh, the NDA had 61% vote share, the BJP had 61% vote share, this time 59. Uh, the Congress had 34, this time 35. Let's quickly see how that converts into seats. No surprises here. If that's how big your lead is, 59 plays 35 in a bipolar election, it's a clean sweep. So you, they're holding on, uh, Yashwan Deshmukh, two areas where they shouldn't lose. You know, Absolutely. all these complicated, really detailed, finesse, nuance graphics that we have on the election intelligence dashboard, they're not going to be of any use. If this is how one way the traffic is, then what's the point of all the finessing? Well, you know, I, I was just trying to give what Radhip was saying. I will just give a term to it. I call it Modi dividend. There is a clear cut on an average 15 points Modi dividend as far as the Lok Sabha election is concerned. And the split vote, ironically, you know, I coined that term in 2004 while explaining why Vajpayee's popularity did not translate into votes for the NDA in 2004 because there was a lack of a split vote. 
And since then, we have seen slowly and steady, the number has been increasing. While Rahul is correct that, you know, in many of the states, it is not very clear cut in that way, because in many states where BJP has been absent, their split vote also to take them across a threshold of 30% wouldn't come. Let's say, for example, Kerala. Kerala, Vidhan Sabha election, BJP goes into single digits. But, In Lok Sabha election, they almost touch 20%. But, but can, know, I, can I just make a point? And Raj, I want you to come in on this. When BJP swept states like Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh in 2019, we called it the Balakot bump. That post Balakot, Mr. Modi had taken over the entire space. Now, even without Balakot, the fact is in both these states, the BJP is holding its own, sweeping Rajasthan as per this poll. 27 out of 29 in Madhya Pradesh. In Rajasthan, there was a close contest just a month ago. And yet now, Lok Sabha, it appears it's uh, the BJP all the way. What explains it? So we can even throw Balakot probably out of the, uh, uh, out of the equation to just say there is the Moditva factor. You know, if you look at it, and if you ask somebody, even in Delhi or in Madhya Pradesh, who would you really want in the center? I mean, that's the question. And that answer is a very logical answer that voters would give. I would gather in Madhya Pradesh as well, who is the Congress projecting for, uh, for them to vote for? You mean as prime minister? As prime minister. Whereas you have Modi, and he has performed well. The state has uh, rewarded him well. And I think here, if you look at it, just to make a larger point, there has to be a saffron wash what I call a saffron wash in about six, seven states for the, for the BJP to get to its 303 or 370. Madhya Pradesh is one of those states. It lost one seat last time. And uh, there's a whole cluster of states where their vote percentage is 50% or more. I think, uh, let's take the seats, 223 seats or so, where they, they are, their margin is so big, over five lakhs or something, no. that they will win. Madhya Pradesh is one of those states that's there. So there are two points I'd like to make. One is what you were saying earlier, that the Modi factor will work very, very strongly to dispel any state kind of resistance that is building or any Congress support that could move towards Rahul or anything that's there. And two, these are the kind of states where the, when we have 50 percent, the no, but, opposition has no chance. Sure, but, you know, Amitabh Tiwari, this comes back to the point which many people have been making, that the real battle for the opposition was to try and take on the BJP, where there's a direct BJP Congress fight. 186 seats last time where there was a fight, the Congress won just 12. If these numbers are to be replicated, it once again shows where the Congress is the main opposition, i.e. Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan. The BJP is the front runner, and you're seeing the Prime Minister in all his recent speeches, not focusing on regional parties, targeting the Congress, the Kamzor Kadi, as the BJP sees it. Yes, so one of the main reasons why BJP is again sweeping both these states is because it is facing Congress as the opposition, yeah, number one. Number two, the India Alliance partners do not have a single vote in these two states. So there is no advantage to Congress of any India bloc formation because it does not get the reciprocity. And number but three is that, as you said, the Modi factor, let's say. So 31, 33% people, or rather 37% people, voted on the name of the PM face. So if you don't have a PM face, you are excluding 37% of the... Right, but why right these segment? numbers leave the Congress party? They've lost Madhya Pradesh, they've lost Rajasthan Assembly election, they've lost Chhattisgarh. Now you've got a possible sweep as per this mood of the nation poll. Will it only further demoralize the Congress in the, in the heartland? Rajiv, actually that's the real trouble with the Congress party because Congress is strategist and that includes Mr. Yogendra Yadav, a new, you know, addition in uh, team Rahul Gandhi. He's, and I heard, you know, once he told you also in an interview, he seems to think that the, you know, Congress will get seven, eight, nine seats in Rajasthan, five, six seats in Madhya Pradesh and in Chhattisgarh. So there is, you know, he's converting that vote percentage, that 40% plus vote, of the Vidhan Sabha. Vidhan Sabha yeah. into Lok Sabha. And that is where I think there is a tactical error, but, the, but Rahul Gandhi is buying that. And India Alliance is buying that. You so know, Sarman shows this is the real problem in a way for the Congress party to revive itself. These, these are the states where you needed to focus upon in the last six months. You've lost assembly, and now you could be wiped out in Lok Sabha. Rajdeep, the, 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 you, you are thinking that the only people who are fighting this election are basically Kharkeji and Rahul Gandhi and Azza. We have people, we have leaders in our states, they're fighting elections, they're getting ready. So what, what, what will become evident later on is, you know, this, what you, in, your own, in your own poll, we're seeing, say, for example, uh, a bump of three percentage, po three percentage points for India Alliance, which is Congress in Madhya Pradesh, for example.
what that tells me is that there is a solid base for the Congress party to build on. And from now until the elections, anything is possible. So yes, the perception that is being built is that the uh, Modi ji has won, everything is uh, is done. And by the way, yes, exactly, the PDA. Let me get to uh, 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 the PDA that uh, my friend Shahzad talked about. The PDA is, what is it? It is propaganda. There is nobody who, nobody who does propaganda more than uh, Narendra Modi and the BJP. What, is, what does D stand for? D is destruction, destruction of relationships between uh, brothers, Hindus, Muslims in this country. And what is A? A stands for arrogance, arrogance of party, of money, of uh, control of media. By the way, in the, in the Hindi belt that we are talking about, how many newspapers carry any, any news from the Congress party? You know it and I know it. Hindi newspapers do not carry new, uh, news of the Congress party. Meanwhile, not just regular news of the prime minister. Anytime the prime minister says something, he's plastered on television all the time. No wonder people think there is nobody but Narendra Modi, because that is what the media has been projecting. And by the way, I, I would slightly bet to differ. Remain. I read the Dainik Bhaskar every morning, that's and the Dainik Bhaskar is one of the fine papers of the country that does give a lot of news, including news critical of the state governments okay. in those states. So I don't think that's the reason. What, what, so I have a few what, minutes newspaper? left. What? Okay, okay, it's the biggest that, newspaper okay. across these states, but go ahead. Uh, we have, have a few comment. minutes left, and I want to finish with the other states in North India. So I want to come to Jammu and Kashmir. In Jammu and Kashmir, the NDA is projected to have about 49% of the vote share. That's up three from the last time. Uh, remember that a lot of this vote share for the BJP actually comes from the Jammu region, right? Uh, the India Alliance, which is uh, Congress plus NC plus potentially PDP as well, at 36. That's down three from the last time. Others at 15. Converted into seats, uh, Yashwant and his team are projecting that the NDA will be at 2, which is where they were last time. Uh, the India Alliance, which is all these three parties together, will be at 3. So basically the Valley seats going to the India Alliance, the Jammu seats, regardless of what happens in the Jammu region, uh, going to uh, the BJP. From there, let's come to Ladakh, where we saw a big protest recently, but despite that, uh, Yashwant and his team are projecting that Ladakh will be with the NDA. Uh, from there, let's now come to Haryana. Uh, 10 seats in Haryana. The NDA Alliance, uh, the NDA, which is BJP and JJP in Haryana, now expected to come down from 10 to 8, a loss of 2. Uh, the Congress, which lost even Rotak last time, expected to go up from 0 to 2, up 2. Now, what makes you think that that is going to happen, given the fact that there is a 12% vote share gap, 50 plays 38 in Haryana? Uh, Haryana, uh, Haryana, don't count the vote share gaps as such, you, because you remember that Haryana Assembly election, out of the fact that BJP was having a te almost 10% gap lead over the uh, BJP, I kind of predicted that BJP will sweep, but it became a hung. Where on earth did you find that a party with a lead of 10% votes has still ended up in a hung assembly in Haryana? So there are two different kinds of Haryanas. Let's be very uh, uh, upfront about it. <laughs> you know, there are two different Haryanas. It's not regional. It's about the demographics of different seats. And, then the, and the seats where it would be a JAT-dominated seat, they will be problematic for the BJP. The non-JAT seats would be easier for the BJP to win. So let's come to Himachal. Himachal is the one uh, state we haven't dealt with uh, in the north yet. Himachal, 69% vote share for the BJP last time. This spine expected to be 60% down 9. Uh, the Congress at 27, expected to go up to 29. Remember, uh, in Himachal, uh, of the four seats, they are predicting that the BJP will pick all four, the India Alliance none. The government in Himachal Pradesh at this time is the Congress government of Sukhvinder Singh Sukhu. Despite that, the Congress makes no gains in the Lok Sabha election in Haryana. Uh, then the last state is Uttarakhand, where they are predicting just a small dip in the NDA's fortunes when it comes to vote share. From 61 to 59, down 2. India Alliance at 32, up 1. But when it comes to seats, all 5 seats predicted to go to the BJP. You know, therefore, when you look at the big picture, uh, from the first region that we've looked at, and this is, if you're a T20 match and it's power play and you've just finished 6, uh, six overs of the 20, think of North India like this. The projected seat share across North India. First, the vote share across North, North India. NDA, 
India Alliance 38 percent, others 10. That's a 14 percent double digit gap and that includes remember Punjab where the BJP is relatively uh, smaller in terms of its vote share. How does this translate into seats Rahul? And I think this is the story and this has been the story not just now but also 2014 and 2019. 154 of the 180 seats as per the mood of the nation done by C voter go to the NDA 25 to India Alliance and remember of this 25 majority again coming in from Punjab effectively Rahul that means it's almost game set if not match just when you look at the North Indian numbers I mean it is almost impossible then for any side to match up uh, when you lose so big uh, in such a large part of the country and it's been the Northwest monsoon that has really won the BJP we, 2014 and 19. We haven't come to the West yet. You've seen That's the right. northern torrential downpour in favour of the BJP. We'll show you what's happening in the East and what's cooking around the Bay of Bengal uh, in the East and what's happening in the West along the Arabian Sea. So all that coming up in the second hour of programming. We've dealt with the North where if this was, Rajdeep said, a T20 match, you know, this is one-way traffic in this T20 match. You've got one team which is blazing away. Six overs, 100 runs. Huh? Six overs, 100 runs. 14 runs and over or 15 runs and over. Which, you know, really makes it almost impossible you know, and, to come back. And the thought that's coming to my mind, you know, there you see my election intelligence dashboard working. So many great ideas, so many different data sets which we are cutting and dissecting and diving. I'm wondering what's the point. If it's all pointing in the same direction, then this is there's going to be a lot of effort which won't really yield too much results. But anyway, unlike the opposite, we need to fight on. We need to bring uh, all those data sets together for you.